Tonight's video is brought to you by the James Boys Online Poker Night. See if you have what it takes to beat the best. All right, brothers, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, tonight, we are going to be sharing some light on behalf of St. James Lodge number 114, and it will be presented by our junior deacon, Casey Gordon. Uh, and Casey's prepared, ready, and set with his headset and microphone. So we're going to pass it over to Casey to share his screen uh, and uh, conduct our uh, our light and our presentation for, the, for today. Thank you. All right, all right. Good evening, brothers of St. James Lodge number 114. This is your junior deacon, Casey Gordon speaking. And tonight, my topic that I'm gonna be presenting you with today is our Masonic Lodge Jewels, okay? What is a jewel? A jewel is an important color-based gem worn by Masons to distinguish the difference in position and role of the Lodge. The jewel of lodge officers should be either silver or white metal suspended from blue velvet collar, from a blue velvet collar, or a badge worn on the left breast. A jewel symbolizes a couple of things. First, it establishes a position of authority, followed by a responsibility to play a role in the functioning lodge. Second, it shows us that in operative times, jewels were more were important to stonemasons in a different light compared to today because the real value back then wasn't necessarily the jewels themselves, not like the physical jewels, but it was more so perfecting the craft, which is making the perfect stone. That's where the value was. And stone masons back in those times, when they you know did graduate and became master masons and masters of the craft, they usually went off and went to other areas, other areas of Europe or you know, maybe other areas of Africa to work on new and or different projects. All right, the first jewel that I'm gonna go over is the Junior De the junior Deacon's Jewel. And it's the one I currently wear as a Lodge Officer for St. James number 114. The Junior Deacon's Jewel of Office is the square and compasses united with the moon. The compasses on the jewel of the Junior Deacon are a reminder that he is still within the bounds of mankind. The compass circumscribes our desires as man. The square guides us to want to measure ourselves to become virtuous and morally sound. The crescent moon on the jewel of the junior deacon simply tells of his placement in the lot of the lodge while he's in the lodge, which is located in the west to the right of the senior warden's office. The next jewel I'm gonna go over is the senior deacon's jewel, uh, currently worn by, by our brother, uh, brother Javon Greenway. And uh, the jewel of office of the senior deacon is the square encompasses united with the sun. Uh, the sun rises in the east, as we all know, so it's the, uh, the master of the lodge. Um, they're also the senior deacons placed to the right of the worship master in the east. The rods that the junior and senior deacon carry are vital because we are indeed messengers of the lodge. We carry messages, you know, all throughout about the lodge as where whoever our warden or our master is may uh, see us to direct. Um, the senior deacon being the master's messenger, other parts of the world, the, junior, the same jewel for the same position may be different in other countries for instead of the compass with uh, the sun in the square, there may be like a dove on top with an olive branch, which in ancient times, you know, doves were seen as like messenger birds. So it's somewhat of the same premise, but a little different. Or in other parts of the world, you probably see uh, a figurine of maybe like, a, you know, Hermes or, uh, you know, Mercury, or maybe the um, Stava Seduceus, which is, usually seen as like the 
god of messaging and things like that, and uh, in mainly in Greco-Roman philosophy. Yeah. The next jewel, Junior Warden's jewel. The Junior Warden is the third highest ranking officer in the Lodge. The jewel of office of the Junior Warden is the Plum. The Plum in operative masonry was an instrument used by stone masons to measure the alignment of a vertical surface. The Plum teaches us as masons to walk upright in our several stations before God and man. The Junior Warden's duty is to superintend the craft when going from labor to refreshment and ensure that upright behavior is maintained and that there be no room for perversion or excess. The next jewel, Senior Warden's Jewel. The jewel of office of the Senior Warden, the first warden, is most represented by the level. The level is also known as one of the three jewels in masonry that are immovable. The level of symbolism, the level is symbolism for equality. No man is better or higher than the other, and each is treated with the equal amount of respect as the next. The level represents equality amongst the craft when at labor. The Tyler's Jewel. The Tyler of a lodge is also known as the Outer Guard. He resides outside the outer door of the lodge. The Tyler's Jewel of Office is the Sword. The Sword in the Tyler's case is an instrument symbolic for refusing to let anyone who is not duly qualified by the worship master enter the lodge. Being a proper implement of his office, the Tyler sword has no scabbard to sheathe it, for the Tyler must always be ready and armed to defend his position against the approach of Callens and eavesdroppers. Next, the secretary's jewel. The secretary is the backbone to any Masonic Lodge. His responsibilities are a huge contribution to the Lodge when conducting business and all Lodge functions. The jewel of office of the secretary is the cross school pens, which is symbolism for him being the recorder of the Lodge. Most of his duties take into account of his responsibility to record the minutes of the Lodge meetings, roll call of members, petitions, notices from the Grand Lodge, uh, petitions of new candidates, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, also, uh, one thing I find like very interesting about the cross quills is that it literally when I saw the this sim this symbol and I looked up a little bit of information about it, it reminded me of like kind of like in the George Washington days or like very ancient days in the past where we didn't have metal pens and a lot of you know. Uh, you know, pirates or like, you know, I don't really, really want to call them politicians, but people, men of power in those times, when they wrote letters to people, whenever they had to do acts of diplomacy, they've always wrote, wrote in with a, like a specific uh, quote pen dipped in ink. So that's something that um, I think the term is the pen is mightier than the sword. I think that's where that comes from. So the secretary does play a very integral part of how the lodge functions, you know, alongside the master, of course. The treasurer's jewel. The treasurer is responsible for all financial transactions within the lodge. The jewel of office for the treasurer is the pair of crossed keys. The signal, the signal of the crossed keys is reference to having the keys for a cash box. By order of the master with, with, by order of the master and with the agreement with brothers, present at labor, the treasurer receives all money dues to the lodge and pays debts also. The responsibility of the treasurer has the capacity to either make or break the financial stature of a lodge general. Next is the marshals jewel. The marshal, our current marshal right now for St. James is past master brother Steve Harry. Uh, the marshal is the lodge, lodge's conductor. The marshal's duty is to oversee the precedence and etiquette when there are visitors in the lodge that have or haven't been introduced to the brothers when the lodge is in session or at business. The marshal is an optional officer because not all lodges have uh, marshals. You know, in some jurisdictions, they either don't have a placement for the marshal or they just don't have one at all. 
but uh, in our just jurisdiction currently, in the second uh, jurisdiction of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge in New York, we have our marshal, so we're good. Uh, the cross batons. The cross batons are a reference to the marshal conducting and gesturing the correct movements about the lodge, for it's beneficial to keep our steps and movements about the lodge squared, especially when we're moving from uh, for, from and or to past the altar. Next is the chaplain's jewel. The chaplain's jewel is the holy book within a circle. The open book can refer to any of the known verse books, um, you know, spiritual knowledge, be it the Quran, the Torah, the Tanakh, uh, the Holy Bible, or any other, you know, various spiritual manuscripts that are very well known by a majority of people. Here in the most worst blue pens called Grand Lodge in New York, we use the Holy Bible and the Holy Bible in most lodges I here currently use the Holy Bible as well. Um, the jewel of the chaplain is a symbol of humility and spiritual consciousness. The prayers said in the opening and closing of the lodge help invoke the support and role of the chaplain that acknowledges people and fellow brothers from other faiths, spiritualities, and essentially all walks of life, which can be something that is endearing and welcoming when you walk amongst any, you know, uh, group, uh, Masonic group, you know, to have that chaplain there that always knows and understands and knows how to talk and break down people. It's something that can't be seen as nothing else but an asset, right? The next jewel is gonna be the deacon's rods. The deacon's rods shall be blue. The steward's rods are white, surmounted by their proper jewels in silver or white metal. The blue on the deacon's rods represents friendship and benevolence. The steward's rod, white rods represent purity and innocence. Different from region to region in Masonry, some jurisdictions have the deacon's rods topped with the square and compasses with the sun and crescent moon in the center for the junior and senior deacons currently for St. James. Usually, you know, we will have that, but I don't think we have a little, a little, um, our jewel on top, but, you know, same premise. Um, the next jewel I'm gonna go over is the past master's jewel. It's one of my favorites. Um, the jewel that is worn by the past master is the blazing sun along with the compasses standing on a quadrant. The past master jewel is a symbol with a square of virtue is a calm reminder to Masons that has served the seat in the East. The compasses remind us that the past master is not only within bounds of mankind, but he teaches other Masons to also stick within their moral compass. The blazing sun reminds us that the past master has also served the sun at the meridian and south of the junior water station, for sure. Next jewel is the Worshipful Master's Jewel. This one, the Master's Jewel, is a square of virtue. In operative Freemasonry, stonemasons would use the same square instrument to square their work. The square meant that stonemasons made sure that the edges and angles on their stones were cut smooth and correct. This helped them define their true stones. Now, in speculative masonry, the master observes all proceedings within the lodge in an axe order and becomes the symbolism of the square of virtue when he sets the craft to work by giving them honest and wholesome instruction for their labor. This being his ultimate responsibility to determine how well the lodge functions and whether the lodge is smooth and correct. In the craft, we are all rugged stones doing our best and trying to become smooth. The next jewel, is the Master of Ceremonies Jewel. The Master of Ceremonies Jewel is acquainted by a pair of cross swords. The cross swords is, uh, one is entitled uh, to the Senior Master of Ceremonies and one is entitled to the Junior Master of Ceremonies. It's two of them, it's a pair. The duty of the Master of Ceremonies is to prepare and conduct candidates before and after degree work. Both the junior and senior master of ceremonies staffs of uh, cross swords 
acts as authority over the candidate. So they can test and observe whether the candidate is worthy, well qualified, or duly and truly prepared. Then the next jewel. Oh, oh. I think this is the next and last jewel, if I'm not mistaken. The stewage jewel. The stewage jewel is followed by a cornucopia inside of a circle. The cornucopia is usually seen with a harvest, although in masonry, it can be recognized as a symbol of abundance or something that's plentiful. You know, usually during the harvest, when you do a lot of work and you raise a lot of crops, you know, and it's time to harvest everything, you know, you get to enjoy what they say, the fruits of your labor. So the steward's station is in the south, assisting the junior warden. As the craft is closed from labor to refreshment, the stewards take control in ensuring the craftsmen getting plenty of sustenance and provisions available to, before, and or after the meeting. Similarly to the master of ceremonies, the stewards also help prepare candidates and set up the lodge room when needed. And if I'm not mistaken, that might be, yes, that is my last jewel. So, yeah, those were my, this is my presentation. Give you some light on what I thought the symbolism behind Masonic Lodge Jewels were, how they correspond at least to a little bit what our roles are in Masonry. Because one thing I've learned from doing this research is that no matter how square we may be, everything comes full circle. Another <laughs> <laughs> Junior Deacon, uh, great work on your presentation today. Um, I will tell you that many times we, we miss these basic understandings of what we utilize as we uh, conduct our meeting. Every piece of masonry has an intricate meaning to it. Uh, and there's a purpose for these things and why they, why they uh, take place and why they exist. There has been many times that I have met uh, many brothers and individual masons uh, that are not sure which jewels go and for what purpose and why do they exist. Uh, and, it, and it does happen as, you know, you know, kind of climb that ladder going towards the east. Um, but this is uh, basic information, but it is important information that uh, that some brothers don't know. And, and it is okay to not know something. What's not okay is to not ask about it. And I think because it's so basic at times, brothers don't want to ask because they don't want to seem like I don't know about it, right? Uh, thank you for sharing that, and I appreciate it. Um, brothers, any questions or comments for uh, our brother Junior Deacon on this presentation? Pastor Master. First of all, uh, brother Junior Deacon, great job. Definitely yeah, appreciate the refresher, man. It was uh, something that I needed not only by me, but I'm pretty sure every brother always needs something to uh, to sharpen those uh, those edges. Um, my question to you, as brother Junior Deacon, is as someone who is fairly new in the lodge, and if you did your research here, it's not it's not a question that that's the right answer. Just your just your opinion. What do you feel is the greatest position or the most important position in the lodge, and why? The most important? The most important. In your, in your opinion. Now, mind you, oh, this, my this, yes. this is an opinion. This is an opinion. Mm. I like that you asked me that because I was thinking about that. And I was trying <laughs> to decide between two, two. Okay, what are you two? I would say the Tyler and I would say it's between the Worshipful Master and the senior warden because I feel like the senior warden okay. when the worst master is present or sometimes when he cannot be present always has to make sure we stay on the level which I feel like is a very important thing okay. that can maintain and sustain a largest function you know, right. if we're all on the level and we all have the same respect for each other no matter what title anyone is holding then we can come to agreement and we can disagree to agree. Sorry, we can agree to disagree, more or less. Okay, you know, it's, it's, like I said, it's no wrong answer, it's your opinion, so it's all what you say, but great explanation, great, um, great presentation. I definitely appreciate the refreshment, I really do. Thank you. I'll chime in there really quick too. I think an important position, uh, I think, I, listen, I think every position is very important, but I think one of the most important positions 
uh, is also the junior warden in regards to their responsibilities to the brothers outside of the lodge, right? Right. Mm. We know when we get inside those doors, we know that we're able to conduct ourselves uh, on the level and conduct the work that we need to get done and accomplish our tasks that are in front of us, right? Uh, for the most yeah, part. for the most part, right? Um, because Josh got that microphone, so you know he got to get a better microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know the other the other portion of it though is the lives that we have outside of masonry affects our attendance. It affects our motivation. It affects uh, the impact that we can have as a lodge. The growth ability, the accomplishments, all of that is affected by our families, by instances, by issues, uh, by by hurdles that just pop up. So I think the junior warden plays an important role because. We can do everything that we know to do inside the lodge to keep everyone together, keep everyone motivated. But uh, keeping the lodge together outside of those doors uh, is an important piece to helping us find the reason and the purposes of, of you know, meeting and continue, continue our growth. So, right. Yeah, so, well, well, now, may I step in? Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> okay. My, my opinion, the most uh, important person at this time is going to be our senior deacon because our senior deacon is to receive all candidates that come into our lodge and also he is the one that actually does all our all of the uh work in reference to uh degree work is concerned and also he is the one that actually officially opens up the lodge right Mm, that's true. Right, that's true. I definitely agree with Pastor Mr. Kelly. My two positions, I have two like cases. I have the seed deacon, for the exact same reason that Pastor Master Kelly said, and I have the junior ward. But mine's for a, diff, a little bit different reason. <laughs> the, the junior ward, in my opinion, when you're in that position, that is your trial run to be master of the lock. Do that. Because usually, when you're the when you're the senior deacon, like Pastor Kelly said, you're opening the lodge. You're making sure everything is where it should be. You're making sure that the candidates are how they should be. Mm. But the junior warden, that is like the trial period for you to be master. How you dictate yourself as junior warden is how you will be as worship master. If you're not a good junior warden, you will not be a good master because you can't handle all those capabilities, especially in our lodge. But if you're a great junior warden, you will be a great master. So I would advise every brother who has aspirations to go to the East, Pay attention to every position, but those two positions, senior deacon and junior warden specifically, those ones that will make or break your time as master in this lodge, if you get to that point. If you get there, yes. Right. So I want to uh, add, they will just make a comment. So when you were going through through, through the jewels, you know, I, I, I knew you were doing the presentation ahead of time. Um, the one jewel I did not expect you to touch on was the past master's jewel. Why? Because our jurisdiction, from a lodge, from a, from a lot blue lodge standpoint, the lodge and our jurisdiction, our past masters don't wear that. The only person that wears that jewel is a grand lodge officer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, and it depends on 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 the office also because they also have their own jewels as well. Mm -hmm. So when you when you brought up the past masters jewel, I was kind of surprised because that's not a, that's not something we talk about within yeah. our jurisdiction with that specific jewel. So I commend you for, for kicking knowledge on, on that standpoint and going outside the box with that. Um, you know, and, you know, I'm going to talk, talk about the, the, in my opinion, which is the most important one, because truthfully and honestly, each each one plays its role to making the lodge yeah. operate as a machine. So, you know, you have right. your leader, which is the worship master, and it, everybody's got to play their part. If not, because if one falls, then you have a broken machine. Um, so I I, sure. I commend you for for a great presentation. You know what? You know what? To, to piggyback off what uh, Feliciano just said, you'd be surprised how many people in that jurisdiction do not know about their past masters. Yeah. Because even though here, here's the thing, even though we do not do it in the state of New York, it is still a Masonic jewel that you need to know about. Yeah. Period because you're not gonna be staying just in New York your whole entire time. If you stay in New York your entire time, you pretty much defeat the purpose of being a traveling man, period. Mm. And side note, I remember uh, now, our, man, our man, senior man, warden. On that as well. uh, yeah, I remember, hold on, hold on a second, Pastor. Yeah, I think it back. 
Yes, sir. Go, so I remember our, our senior warden actually bringing this up in a lecture in the lodge uh, about that specific draw as well when he was junior when he was junior warden. So, <laughs> ask Master Kelly. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now I have to ask the question: uh, Food for thought. Are you properly clothed just by having a past master's apron that has been given to you? an honorarium of being a past master, or do you need the jewel as well? Mm. Mm -hmm. To be properly clothed. That's a good one. <clears throat> I mean, for us as a lot, we, we've always done it, uh, you know, by presenting just the apron and accepting that, you know, being properly clothed as a past master. But with the jewel as a representation, uh, I, I can, I can see the purpose of, of obviously carrying the jewel with the apron uh, to say that you are fucking broke because it is it is the representation of the past master. Right. It's it's almost as like is the wonderful master fully clothed if he doesn't have his jewels on but has an apron on, right? I mean, mm. the, the roles are still similar. Uh, it's the roles are are the role is an apple to apple role because it's a representation of who you are. Um, but, uh, you know, you, I guess you can ask that question about multiple positions. Mm -hmm. Senior Deacon, Junior Deacon, are they properly well, clothed um, without their jewels? Well, again, if you uh, understand what that lambskin apron is and the connotation of understanding the symbolism of it, the jewels have no significance over your apron. Right. Uh, where's your master? Yes, Pastor Master. Master I have an observation. Uh, I've heard everybody they get a lot uh, opinions, and I'm very going to give mine based sure. on a question that you ask every meeting hmm? to the junior ward, junior deacon. The junior deacon, the first great care of this event has been to see that we are duly tired. Uh, the right. great first great care of Jason's rent for me. So all these other positions to me are not as important <laughs> as to make sure that my loss is held. Because if anybody can come in there or get in there, break in there, he is the only person that has a weapon to stop somebody from coming into this lounge. Right. That's a, a coin of Eve Dropper. So I think that's the most important position. However, the secretary is the most powerful position in this penal lounge. Mm. Correct. Because a secretary, a, 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 and this is what I learned throughout my travels in other organizations. A good secretary, a good secretary can make a bad worshipful master look good. <laughs> good, 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 thing, good thing you guys got a good secretary to get away from master. Remember, brothers, I said a good, a good secretary can make a worship master, a good secretary can make a bad worship master look good. He can also make a good worship master look bad. Mm. I'll give you an example. If he does not advise that worship master that a candidate has not been balloted on, he can cause that worship master to lose his jewel. Because if that worship master gives, uh, 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 initiates that brother, the grand master will suspend him from moving from office, and that has happened in the second district. Yep. Oh, a yeah. worship master will be moved from office because the secretary did not inform him that the brother, that the candidate was not balloted on. So it tells you the power. You see, we're talking about important, and what do we mean by important? But powerful, you know what I mean? That's a deep, the power of the, the each position is powerful. The one for my side is power, the junior one has its power, the senior, everybody has the little power, but that's, that, 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 that's secretary. <laughs> that secretary gets called there and he does and it, he doesn't do the duties and, and, and informs the world from master as we go along. Put that poor world from master in trouble. So mm. it's powerful and important. Important right. is that I know everybody needs to know that before that that there's somebody guarding the door. Right. Yeah. All right. 
So if brother, you can't guard, if I don't have nobody guarding the door, I don't have a lot. Right, we can't have a meeting, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I can't have no, a meeting. You better, I, I, no, I wasn't no, thinking. I, I, don't, I don't say we can't have a meeting because the, the question is asked, how many contracts are large of Master Masons? Two. Three or more. Mm-hmm. Three or more. You never mentioned Tyler. Right. right. Never mentioned Tyler. But who is there to stop somebody from flying through that door? This to me, a, 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 a brother that's uh, uh, one flying there to, to, to do harm to the worship master or his girlfriend flying there, you know, his wife is upset right now, the voice is wrong, you know, he, flies up, he flies up into that large apartment with my husband now. I heard, some, I heard some stories about things like that. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, to piggyback off of what Pastor Master Usher was saying, I definitely well, want to... Well, sorry, Pastor Master Usher, go ahead. But, but, but it's a very, very important question that the past asked, you know what I mean, in that it lets you open your mind. You know what I mean? It, eventually, it's a science, so you open your mind and you start thinking. Right. Thinking, you know what I mean? Hey, we are all important. But right. you know, the, the, yeah. the, who I who do I need? I need I need somebody to guard that door with a with a magnum with a what kind of gun you use now? You know, the, the powerful gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, you know, so I still hear you go work at that door today. You know, I mean, yeah, I need something better than that. Right. But I also, also need somebody that can keep my records. <laughs> if mm. I don't have but, records. Of my life, I do nothing. Thank you, right. brother, brother yeah. Feliciano. So you got, you got to make sure you're on point, bro. You can't, you can't be messing. With <laughs> listen, listen. I'm the one making you look good. What are you talking about? Pass, 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 pass. Pass, pass. What Usher was saying, I could say uh, from from uh, my time in East that Josh was a very, very, very integral part of of everything that this lodge did, and. It, He's like the glue that really um, held everything together, and it, for sure, kudos to to uh, him. And um, cool. it, you know I, what he's doing to help uh, help this lot grow is absolutely phenomenal. So we, we should never overlook that. Yeah, his no, love. Uh, no, his, oh, so, he, so he made you look good then. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I just got the leftovers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, no, we we we've definitely taken. Listen, we've taken steps as a lodge, only like literally growing the lodge, like physically growing it, but also like mentally growing this lodge and allowing this lodge to evolve. Right, like. I, I, one of the largest challenges that lodges have is evolution of a lodge, right? It's the comfort level of evolution. Yeah. I've found a science to make that an efficient and easy and adaptable evolution of our lodge. And and yes. our, it's not done. Um, we've introduced new ideas, but <laughs> what helps that efficiency and, and that adaptability take place uh, is, is the support from all of us. Right. I think I said a couple of minutes, like, you know, 20 minutes ago when we were have, when we were discussing our events, uh, that you can have all these ideas and two to three people could support them and say, this is really cool. But if the lodge doesn't support it, uh, then the event is going to fail. And we've seen that multiple, multiple. Listen, I'm worship master. Um, I will say this 10 years ago, this would have never happened. Right. Yes. I'm, I'm definitely being totally honest with you. You, you know, if you guys would have known the the stuff we went through, <laughs> like myself, uh, Past Master uh, Barton, Past Master Banks, if you guys knew what we went through ten years ago, we went through hell to get the James to get the the Father's Day dance from being called a Father's Day disco. Let's just get that out in the open right now. <laughs> if y'all don't believe me, I will post it in the WhatsApp group. As soon as it's over, I have the flyer. There was a flyer we had called Father's Day Disco. It is 2010. Why? I, was, was it mandatory to wear bell bottoms? Look, look. <laughs> you know hey, 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 hey. Listen, it was, it was mandatory to wear all white. Not even joking. <laughs> You had to wear all white. And when I mean all white, I'm like tear sucker white. I'm not even joking right now. Yeah. You can ask see, well, th- th- see, these are these are the stories that we're going to find out about when it comes to past masses night. That's, that's what the discussion going to be going about. I'm telling you, it was it was me. It was it was me. It was um, it was Daryl. And it was kidding. We're like, yo, why did I'm like, why the hell they call it a disco? 
Because it's intense, bro. Here's the thing, though. We didn't. Even oh no, no, no. Hold on. If, if we had, if we called the disco, did we have that little white ball? No, that no, we, no, we didn't even have no, that. no, no. Listen, when I'm telling you, it was called a disco. It was called a disco. It was all white. Past Mr. Barton's wife, Stacia, made a flyer with fun. You know, matter of fact, I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna stop talking about it. <laughs> But, but wait, 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 wait. But was not the disco successful? <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Now, now, I was there. Now you, let that down. Yeah. Master, master, listen. You were there. <laughs> I will brag for a minute. I will humble brag. My party was the best when I was master. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. All right. The next person at the dopest party was VJ. <laughs> VJ when VJ, I mean Jason, when Jason had that party, that was dope. Because I remember everybody was like, yo, can we get the bartending? I'm like, dude, dude, my thing, here's my thing. My advice for any master, person who wants to be master's lodge, do it. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Make a mistake. Mm. Yeah, it. I mean, listen, we did we did a lot of that last year, right? Like yeah. planning planning that party. I remember when when you know we, I first just put that plan out there. I remember everybody's looking at faces like, Ugh. listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> but but again, but it, it goes right back to it though. It's like we all we all supported and adapted right. that idea. Uh, listen, the worst thing you can do is just stick to the norm and expect for different results. It's not going to happen. Correct. It's not going to happen. Look at the single yeah, minded party we had. The first year it was great. The second year we're like, okay, yeah, we're gonna give this up now. But right. it was the fact that right. you did it. You know what I'm saying? You right. tried. Right. You know, even even with the Instagram site, even with the Twitter, even with even with the website, it was website. like, okay, YouTube I'm gonna try this. Links, like, right. the thing was, I'm gonna try this, and I was like, listen, I'm out. Give it to Josh. Josh blew it up to a proportion I never thought it was gonna happen. But the thing is, you have to do these things if you want to. Con- we can't conform to ourselves. We kind of have to stay ourselves and then conform to what the world is doing as well. Look at Javon. That's how he got here. (laughs) Exactly. Social media, right? Yeah, social media. Right. Exactly. My brothers, my brothers, this is, I apologize. This is my uh, celebration weekend. You go ahead. I can spend the time hanging with you hard heads, but I got to go. (laughs) You got to get get back to your disco, right, Pass? I got to get back to the disco. Okay. (laughs) All right, now you enjoy you enjoy your weekend. I appreciate you. Thank you. We are at like the eight thirty time frame. These conversations are always awesome. Um, I I would tell you, listen, we 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 can talk about all the accomplishments that we've done. Um, you know, over the past three years, four years, five years, ten years, twenty years. Uh, Past Masters Night is a culmination of us talking about everything that we did and all the trials and tribulations that we've had and the challenges Mm. accomplished from the beginning of time. Uh, we are into our 40th year anniversary, and I will tell you, I will have the best party in the East. Ooh, <laughs> uh, 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 Ooh, all right, all right. <laughs> but, um, I, I'll leave Worship, it there. But... Wor- Worship Master, may I have permission in order to leave? Absolutely, Pass Master Kelly, for sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Hey, hey Worship Master, uh, I'm going to hop as well, if you don't mind. Uh, I got an anniversary yep. party in the back. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, you do. You do that. So, brother Casey Gordon, appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you presenting uh, your your light tonight again. Like we said, I think you know um, these basic teachings continue to help our lodges uh, understand you know the, the small things in the lodge, but every single piece is important. Uh, so, thank you for for presenting that. We appreciate it very much. Thank you for the conversations that it has allowed us to have in the direction that we took our conversation into tonight. Um, <laughs> makes us as James Boy strong. So, I appreciate that. All the viewers out there, continue to like and subscribe. Uh, Thank you very much.